We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Welcome to the Bloody Fuck! And here in the danger zone, I am Malik Brown being joined by Yes, you certainly are joined by D Wall. Right to you, man. Right to you with our opening contest here tonight on Battle Live Episode 1 as the most athletic out D Martin is looking to make. Impact up against Alice Kamal. And Alan B. Martin, I believe, was a part of the very first Queens of Wrestling event. If I'm not she was made the return match. The ref as Allison Allen B. Marner saw Allison Stone. She's looking to pick up a win after that very, um, very hard fought law. The very well, I guess you could say, very tough loss she got from the preliminaries for the battle pro spot of Queens Wrestling 3. Yeah, you know, Allison Simone really wanted to get back to that spot at Queens of Wrestling where she was two years ago but now she has to work her way back up from the bottom which coincidentally has been her, the story of her entire career and she's, really? she's gone from the bottom she's working her way up to the top but once she makes it right up near the top of the mountain she never makes that one final push toward the very very top and that's what's hurt her career it seems like but you can say that for sure. You gotta feel, you gotta wonder what's going on in Alex's head as she makes her way down in the ring. What's really going on in her mind right now? After having a four-way tie for second place and was literally inches away, but to lose that opportunity to go to Queens of Wrestling 3 to Ainimi Ishibashi, now she's here on episode one of Battle Live in the opening contest against Alan D. Martin. And what should go and be going through her head isn't how she lost. It should be how she's going to work her way through that loss. Because I think another thing that's hurt her career is the fact that she spends too much time focused on her losses, and and you know, and not focusing too much on why she lost and improving from that. And but now she just focuses she focuses too much on the just the losses themselves and she gets so down in the dumps about it she never take really takes too much time to really think to herself why did I lose and how can I learn from it and this is where that is going to come into play right here because if she doesn't stay focused then she'll end up losing another big match and you know it's it's you can't really say it's a big match just because it's two women like these. Oh, nice. Working on the arm. That's right. A little bit of chain between those two. And now look at Al Allison. I don't know if that's a good idea. No, it, it really but, oh, oh, it is. I think, she knew what, I think she knew what Allen B was going to do. And she caught her into a Fujiwara. And you see Allison, like I was saying, she spins. Oh, look at this, though. Oh, Martin my God. With a head scissors. Allen B. Martin showing why she's called the most athletic. And here's the thing, Allison Simone and Allen B. Martin, you know, you could, you know, some people would say this isn't a big match, but cover here, I'm going to uh, get a foot under the rope. Some people might say this isn't a big match, but it kind of is because 
you know that Jackie Barnett is looking at every woman on the Battle Pro women's roster to see who can be the first challenger for Danny Gibbons and the world women's title. That's true. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God, wait a minute. Pop up power bomb picks her back up into a suplex. That's a amazing. Somebody get the squeegee for Allison right now. That was a nice combination. Now Allison, big. That's a nice Allison flurry. Allison looks like she's there. out. Nope. Ow. Not even a one count. That's what now you see. have to do. She's got to stay focused. That's true. Actually, you... actually, both of these women need to stay focused because, like I said, Jackie Barnett is looking at every woman on this roster. You know, it, there may not be that many women on the roster right now, but you got to believe that with Battle Pro now back in the picture in virtual wrestling, Every woman in virtual wrestling is looking to come here to see who can knock Danny Gibbons off that mountain that she's been on several times in her career. The standard bearer, as she calls it herself, of the virtual wrestling women's uh, world right now. You got to feel Alyssa Simone was that woman who was in that triple threat to determine the first world women's champion. And then she loses at Queens of Wrestling 3. And you got to feel like this is her starting from the bottom to work her way back up. Yep. And now look at this. Working on the legs with that Indian death lock. That, that very well-known tech, that Matt Technician game that Allison has been known for, her family has been known for. And now, Allenby's just hitting everything! <laughs> With a big ace cut, with a big ace crusher. Then as basic as basic can be, a scoop slam. That's one of the first moves you learn as a wrestler is how to take a scoop slam. And oh my god! Good god! That's just a shin right to the side of the face. And now look at this, Allen B. Oh! You notice she dropped her on the back of her arm as well, and hooking it behind her back. God. Ellen B. Martin, let's be honest here. She's still fairly new, fairly new to the business. You know, Queens of Wrestling 3 was her first real taste of the big time. And you know she wants to make it and show the world that she is a force to be reckoned with at Allison Simone's expense. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Yep. She is literally going all out here with that knee drop, and now she's got her in the middle of the ring. Going for, no! She might have wasted too much time showboating. Very true. You can't showboat with so much at stake with all these women jockeying for position. You know, you lose a match, you lose a spot, and that one woman that takes that pin, she could pull right up at the top where you were. And that's exactly what Allison and Allenby need to remember here. Because you got, you know, you got Barbie J. Tucker still lurking around for that shot. And, wait and you got other women as well. Christina De La Vega, who's in the Queens of Wrestling tournament right now. All right, but wait a minute. She, Allison, Allison's setting up for something here. She's on that other side. Runs up. Oh! Well. Drop kick to, the, drop kick to Allenby's that back. That was in the back. That was in the back, man. Speaking of, Jesus! Up handle backbreaker by Allison Simone and goes out of the ring, goes back into the ring to break the count. What is. And now, oh! Jesus! Oh, this is. And again. That's some aggression. Wait a minute, what, what is well, this? Well, maybe that. Oh, look, look. I, I, you may not agree with it, but. Maybe that's what Allison has needed this entire time. It is some aggression. What it is, is some this? ruthlessness. And it, now she's pointing to herself. Wait a minute. Oh, Jeez! God! Goes <laughs> well, back into 
into the ring after that leg drop from the guardrail. Like I said, maybe Allison's needed this aggressiveness, this ruthlessness oh, God. to get to get her into the business. Because let, let's be honest, she's been trying to play it safe this entire time, and look where it's gotten her. She, it's gotten her far, but not as far as she wants to be, you know? I mean, I'm not going to deny it. There is – everybody needs aggression at some point in time. And, oh, boy. Now, Allison – just uh, yeah I think she's just telling I, th I think she's trying to uh, I think she's trying to partition the oh god oh big spine buster you know Allison's been taking abuse on the outside you dropped on her back but oh yeah Allen B's been taking abuse on the outside yeah uh, you mean but I mean I meant Allen B that's why I'm here buddy anyway as you see Allison again this is oh this might, Big, it, this could help her or this could hinder her. It, it can go either way. It's a double-edged sword. You get too aggressive in a match, you lose focus. And if you lose focus for three seconds, that's all it takes to get a loss right here. Well, right now, it looks like it's, a, looks like it's working for her because yeah, she's it, just it, been on the it's, great attack. It's working right now, but I'm saying in the long term, she can't stay too oh God, aggressive. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh God. Yeah, in the long term, she can't stay too aggressive because Allenby may just be waiting to ride the storm out long enough for Allison to tire herself out because she's being too aggressive. As you see, look at this, see? Pick herself back up. Allenby back up. Wait, no. No. Oh. Got to go for something. Oh. I was going to say earlier with that crotch chop, I think Allison's trying to audition to be a, in a spot in the Bombshell Club. But nonetheless, Allison, uh-oh, here we go. Wait a minute. Moriarty's descent. That, that could be it right there. One, two. That is it. And Allison Simone back on the winning track. And Allen B. Martin, don't sleep on her, ladies and gentlemen. She could be a force in this division if given the opportunity. Very true. After that, great. Look at that. Just that theory of offense. This was like one of the turning points. Oh, I think this probably was a turning point right there. And then Allen B tried to come back, but this reverse DDT. And then that's all she needed to set up Moriarty's descent right here. Yeah, right there. That spinning fisherman. That, fin that spinning fisherman neck breaker. Moriarty's descent. And that was it. It was all said and done. Allison Simone picks up the victory. And now she... Let, now let's see if she can take this and use it to her advantage, though. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's the main thing. She won. Wait. wait. Oh. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Yeah, you remember this? Uh, you remember that mean streak I told you about? Wait, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh come on. Oh god! Yeah, I think I think Allison's done talking. I think now she's trying to send a message that she is not going to be denied any longer here. Good god, she just laid Allen B out with these I may not chair like shots. This. Oh, I may not on. like she's not this. Done. Oh god! Oh, god. I may not like this approach, but like I said earlier in the match, maybe this is what she's needed. You know? She's been all goody goody two shoes for too long, she feels. And maybe she feels like this is the last chance for her. Oh god! To the back of the head! Just notice she just stared hard at Allen B while she was doing that. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. God. Another Moriarty's just sitting on the chair. On the chair. Good god. Can we get some help for Allen B here? Allison just, well, she just made her mark. That's all I can say. That's what she's wanted, right? That's true. I mean, she I mean, did. She's wanted, right. she's wanted people to notice her for three years now. And if that's what, if she, she I guess she felt like if that's what she needed to do to get that attention, so be it. Uh, Got to get... Gotta get to our next 
matchup here. It is tag team action. This one is just your basic tag team match. The new scene. Adrian Klein. Adrian Klein and Lance Cassidy. The new These scene. Two, I'm just going to say this. And you guys can uh, debate me if you want. Just, but from what I've been seeing in virtual wrestling in my um, <clears throat> absence, uh, these guys who give Swift Funk a run for their money, I'm just going to point that out right now. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> a little interesting look for both of them. Uh, Can you imagine new scene and Swift Funk in a match? I'm just going to put that in your, in your mind right now. Look at him. Cassidy and look Clyde. At him. Both hailing from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada here. In tag team so, so we got Canadian Funk versus Swift Funk, right? Is that what we're going with here? Well, I'm, I'm just saying. And their opponents. Well, their opponents are coming here, coming out, coming here now. Got me all messed up. Well, Jesse and Sid Black, the future war cult. Yeah, I don't think Canadian Funk is going to help them right now. I'm just going to point that out. Yeah, they're they're but yeah. Both both Jesse and Sid Black for many years when they were in their youth, around 18 years old, used to run, used to run, used to run the Iowa wrestling scene as the Punk Movement. But over the years, a few yeah, excursions to Ireland and England, they came back with a new look, a new demeanor, and a hell of a lot more attitude than normal. Now they call themselves the Future War Cult. Yeah, I remember uh, the Punk Movement. Didn't really get too far in Battle Pro, but uh, just like Allison earlier, you know, maybe this is what they needed to get the, their careers on track, you know? Yeah, that's true. Some people need an aggressive mean streak. We've seen it in several leagues. It's people that have gone near to the top of the mountain and they haven't really reached those heights. They, they go away for a while or maybe they get a mean streak about them and look what happens. Oh, there we oh! go. God. Adrian Klein right now is about to give all the way out his body. About to give Sid a run for his money, but Sid Black with that reversal. And Jesus! It's a Gurry already aggressive. Coming out the bat. Look at that. And I think, right, what's his, what's his name again? Well, Adrian, are you talking about Adrian Klein or? Yeah, Adrian. Sid? No, the one in the ring. Well, there's Adrian Klein and Sid Black. Okay, Adrian Klein. Oh, God. Adrian just got closed line. That's what he did. That's what he just got. Now the tag in. Sid tags in Jesse. Oh. And Adrian with a back suplex, baby. I mean, you got uh, you had, you said it right, though. When they were the holy <laughs> When they yep. were the punk movement, they were that team that had loads of potential, but just couldn't find that thing that made them. Yep, and now they found it. Indeed, they, they did are find it. Tearing the new scene apart, or at least they're tearing Adrian apart. Adrian Klein, yeah, you know. Jeez! Oh God, they have been keeping Adrian Klein in this ring. It's that, it's the Afro man. They don't like it. Everybody knows that punk rockers don't like Afros. We all know. Well, I gotta say, there is, they don't uh, want to target Lance Cassidy because look at his hair did. Uh -oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ring the it's over. Ring the bell. Up. Oh, nope. He was smart to move out of the in the move out of the ring because everybody knows if you use a really regal move, you already win. It's a proven it's a proven fact. Jeez! STO! Big STO! And wait a minute! Uh oh. Yeah. I, wait think, a minute. I think they're done. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. they're done. I think I know. He calls this the Warhammer! Jesus! Yeah. What a big brain bust combination! They call it the Warhammer! Yeah. Just like that! Yeah. I told you. Malik, you know why they won, right? 
you know why they won, right? It, it wasn't just because of their. It, it wasn't just because of their domination. It wasn't just because of the Warhammer. It's because of the fact that they didn't want to touch Lance Cassidy because of that hairstyle. Because everybody knows that hairstyle is 100% punk. Coming out the window, but gotta take a break. We will be right back with more Battle Pro action. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Battle Live here in the Danger Zone. Oh, look, it's Silver Wolf. Hey. The hat. To be honest, I haven't seen Silver Wolf in a very, very long time. And I just want to point this out. He's got a lot of potential, but it's just, he I don't know, something's missing, you know? You, that's been the thing has just there's something missing right yeah I just don't know what maybe it's the fact that he doesn't speak at all nobody really knows who Silver Wolf is people know or at least they should know who Johnny Metal is because he was a former infinite champion right came in to do the crowning rebirth infinite champion facing off with Marcus King and well he lost he, he lost, but let's not kid ourselves here. That was a war that those two went through. Oh, yeah, totally. There, it it could have been anybody at the point of that match because Johnny threw everything at Marcus. Hell, he, he, gave Mar he almost gave Marcus a concussion multiple times in that matchup, but King pulled it out, and now he is your new infinite champion, and Johnny Metal, well... He's back, he's back at square one. Yep, and that's where a lot of these guys are here in Battle Pro. They are back at square one. I I suggest, and I'm going to point this out, I'm going to suggest, and this is just me, this from my side of the table. I'm going to just suggest this to... Jeez! Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Okay! What the... Already out the gate. Well, um, I'll leave my suggestions for later because Johnny Metal ain't giving any, oh, any, any. He's not, he's not caring right now. Metal's literally throwing the up to the other and just throwing European upper. Like his name is well. I, I can't finish that, but you already know. Yeah, because we'll get sued. We'll and get now, sued and or and or and oh or copyrighted. Oh my! Look at that. A double stretch, but he stings it by pulling the leg. Yeah. And Silver was just getting maimed right now. Look at this. Oh, oh, I, hey, okay. Now he's choking the man. I, 
I literally don't even know what to say right now. Like, I have never seen a oh, wait a minute. The Bulls trying to get back. The Bulls trying to get back into this matchup here. Try to get back into the. All right. Duck down. Oh. oh my god. Oh my god. Jesus. Yeah, I think we're going to need the squeegee for Silver Wolf after this match is over. Jesus Christ. Silver Wolf literally threw an elbow and Metal just brushed it off like it was nothing. Yep. Somebody just take the squeegee out right now. And Metal back in the ring to break the count. What is this? Metal taking a running start. Oh! oh! Bicycle kick to the side of Silver Wolf's head. Yep. I think just, for the first just, time, just, and also, oddly enough, for the first time tonight, D Wall's actually speechless. Oh, I'm not speechless. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, trying to find the squeegee for Silver Wolf because we're gonna need it. It, it looks like we're gonna need it. Oh God, Silver Wolf is getting beat. And, and here, here's here's the running theme tonight that I've been noticing. Everyone here tonight has been getting more and more aggressive. Oh God. Oh. He's lining him up. Lining him up. Oh! Yeah, have you noticed that? Yeah, I have. Ever I've... since the crowning rebirth happened and Battle Pro has been coming back and, you know. Oh! Silver oh, Wolf. Oh! 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 Super kick! Super kick! Silver Wolf! Trying to get back into this. Oh! Leg Lariat. Just threw his. Threw himself at him. The Wolves got to use his fast pace and he's got to use his agility, but no. Yeah, there wasn't much fast pace right there. He was winded, man. He's been taking a beating. And Johnny Metal, yeah. One more bicycle kick for the road, and oh boy. And this is the end. He calls this the DMD. DMD, that is, that's it. You might as One, well, you might as well get the Swift two, Wet Jet right now, not sponsored, because uh, he's gonna need it. We're gonna need it right now. Silver Wolf done. Somebody just sweep him up off the mat. Johnny Metal just destroyed this dude. I mean, this entire match, Metal, is tough. Metal. Just came into this match wanting to prove a point that uh, just because he lost the infinite title doesn't mean that he's going away quietly or that he's going away at all. He just you now you know what an old there's an old and there's an old story a punk and not go gently into the good night. Johnny Pedal did not go into the good night here tonight. It wasn't, and it was nothing. It was there was nothing gentle about it. I'll just point that out. Uh, he raged against the dying light. That's for sure. For Christ Almighty. Yeah. Was and, and now that the uh, and now that the uh, complimentary music references are done for the night, considering yeah. we are in Nashville. Oh, this one. Uh, match, and this one is a points match. Basically, with the point that does this, winning team gets a point. Tag comes to point, they can at the tag team. So for Divine Greatness, this match is important because they have one point. Divine Greatness, one of the top teams in Battle Pro and the first ever copy not to say pre Can I just point out the fact that that it seems like all these teams tonight are ch are trying to challenge Swift Punk for their punkness? <laughs> what what is going on here? 
Is Swift I think that is Swift Funk that much of a impression I think, I on these teams or something I right now? I'm looking a bit too into that. I think I'm looking Dude, too deep into this. Look at them. They've always been. They've they've always had some sort of interesting. Yeah, thing. but they're they're they are swiveling their hips a little bit more than usual here. I was pointing that out. I mean, hell, they're not that I notice anything like that. I'm sorry, this is I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway, um. It's the team that they're going to be facing here tonight. This is going to be interesting. They are going to be some major players. Ah, oh, shit. Well, I said at the crowning, Ethan Locke re-signed the Battle Pro, and AJ Hawk, which I never got a chance to say, also signed right after the uh, their DCA tag match against Swift Punk. So the major players are back in Battle Pro. Yeah, they're in a bad mood. Oh, I don't blame them. They lost to Swift Funk in Swift Funk's debut, and they have never gotten over it. And the fact that they just saw Divine Greatness come out here the way that they did, pretty sure they're reminded of Swift Funk, and they're even more pissed off now than they were before they came out. They got an opportunity because, I got to say, they got an opportunity. But this, is for, this match is for the first point. Of the beginning of the tag team of the tag of the tag team run here on battle on battle pro here on battle live and you got to think it's going to put a feather in their cap if they were able to beat the former campeonatos de parejas in divine greatness oh, of course it would there you, you, know, go. you get a win over former champions no matter who they are and you're then you're pretty much made a made team or made man and look it's aj hawk already not knowing what to do brian and he's in there Jeez. oh He's in the ring with Brian Barnett. Brian Barnett starting this match off for, for Divine Greatness. AJ Hawk starting this off for the major player. Brian Barnett, the youngest of the Barnett boys. And as you can I, see. I, I, I wonder what Jackie and Cody think of Barn of of you know their 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 third guy here. Dancing and shucking and driving the way that he does. I wonder what they think. And him, well, I mean, and, and him wearing pink. Well, I also. mean, he, he, again, like I said, Jackie's got three sons. Jeremy, Cody, and Brian. Brian, out of the two of his, out of the two of his brothers, has this, has pretty much went on a different route when it came to training. Went a different way in his training. Wanted to prove something. That he could stick out on his own without the Jesus! Major Hawk with a random stunner out of nowhere and he gets the tag into Ethan. But Brian is basically trying to prove that he can go on his own without the Barnett name and he can make his own. He can carve his own path without having to resort to that that traditional southern Texas style that the Barnett's have been known for. Yeah, and and you gotta respect that in a way. You know, you got, you got, you know, Cody, you got Brian here. And there, and you know, all the Barnett's trying to make a name for themselves. Some with the Barnett name being proud of that family heritage and some, you know, they're proud of it, but they don't want to use that name as a crutch, you know. And that's Brian. That's that's been Brian's mo for the beginning of his career. And look at Alex Devine, Jesus. And and let's not also forget Tasha Barnett is a part of that family also. Yeah, that's right. Tasha Barnett is also part of the family. The first uh, the first woman of the Barnett family, as a lot of people like to call her. Yep. Tasha did really well in the Queens of Wrestling qualifiers for Battle Pro. Um, I failed to mention her earlier. She could be a big name in the women's division also if given the chance. That is true, and now you see Alex Devine really taking it to AJ Hawk here with that shin breaker. The major players really need a win here. Not just to get a point on the board for their team, but also just to bounce back from their return. They've been, you know, they're in uh, a number of different leagues right now, but they've been, oh God. Oh, big DDT. They're in a number of leagues right now, but they've been 
kind of on an up and down slope. Like they win some and then they lose two. They win one, they lose two. It's like they haven't had a consistent run since they returned. And this could be a way to up. Oh. Wait a minute, what's the out? Oh! Glory bomb. And look at this. Oh, no. Oh, try to go for the leg drop. No. Yeah, Divine ain't going to be doing any hip swiveling right after that. He landed hard on his tailbone. And here comes AJ Hawk again. Oh, try to go for a clothesline. Oh, no. Oh. Unique version of the STO into the cover. Hooking the, well, not hooking the leg. That might have been a mistake. You always got to hook the leg. That is for that, sure. I mean, in, in an, in an, in an environment such as this, you hook the leg. Even if you hook both legs, you get that momentum on the pinfall. Wait a and minute. Jesus Ow, Christ. Wizard. Yeah, like I was saying, you get that momentum on the pinfall, you hook the leg. Gives you more time on that pinfall. And it also, uh-oh. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, my God. Stomp it away. The divine stomps of greatness. I think. No, that, think, that's literally what they're calling. They, that's literally what they call the this. Stuff, the greatness is true. Yeah, they they oh told me God. this. They told me this earlier today, just as they were passing Wait through. A minute. Oh, a baseball slide. They. Yep. Yeah, see, see the hip swiveling. Baseball slide, and now. And now the referee trying to maintain some kind of order here. And AJ Hawk is in is not in the best. You Shape get hit the with the divine stomps of greatness, and you're questioning your man, your manhood at that moment. And and that's what they told me as well in the back. They just passed me a note t saying this, and I'm sitting there, I'm looking at them, and they're like, I'm like, what? <laughs> I gotta say, and I'm well, like, this is like what I, and this is what I'm doing now. Years, and now, oh, oh! trying to go for a flying four or miss, but no. There's only, there are only two people in the world that can hit that forearm. AJ Styles and Aubrey Williams. Everybody else is just right behind them. And Brian. And into the cover. Cover. One, two, and nope. And Ethan breaks Lott it breaking up. It up. If he had hooked the leg, he might have had more momentum on that pinfall. And also, when you hook the leg on a pinfall, Gives the opponent more energy Wait a minute. when it's kicking out. I'm basically saying, I think Brian pretty much going, it's oh. in it. Oh, push through neck breaker. Barnett oh. trying to take AJ Hawk on a moonlight drive. And now, uh oh. What's this? Big sip. Oh, oh Jeez. And they caught out the 87 comeback. One. One. Two. Oh, wait. It's oh. Oh. Wow. Wow, indeed. Another big loss for the major players. You got to wonder how long these losses are going to pile up here. Because look at this. The 87 comeback definitely... Call it out, Swift Funk. I'm just saying. And it looks like it. And what was even more messed up is that Ethan landed right on his feet. He was about to go and make a break for the go. Yep. And divine greatness getting a big win and getting points on the board here. It are points of paper challenging the pick.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Battle Live. And I have to say, our main event's going to be quite interesting. Wait, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Let's battle! What the hell? He's attacking somebody in the back. Wait a minute. Oh my God. That's, that's Troy Simone! Man, Troy Simone just can't keep, take, catch a break, can he? Good God! Jesus! <laughs> I think Johnny Metal's going after all the young boys, it seems like. Oh, right. Really? I don't know what's going on. Oh, God. We're up in trouble. He went after Silver Wolfton <laughs> earlier tonight. Now he's going after another young boy in uh, Troy Simone. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. No, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yep. Can we get some help? Somebody in the back. Uh oh. Well, well, you left. That was loud and clear. You well, left. we still need help for Troy Simone, though. Yep. Now, right now, ladies and gentlemen, we got our final two matches here. As you heard from. Johnny, yes, Coach Park and Kenshin will face off in, in, in a Dead Man Wonderland rematch. Uh, which is a number one contendership. But here tonight, Mike Sullivan, Mike Sully, the MVP of the shore, is going to get his. This is his. Yeah, big time singles match against the debuting DCW star, the Prodigy. And, can I also point out the fact? Oh, hold on, I, hold on a second. Go ahead, because of the, no, no, no I'm, I'm being, I'm actually being serious here for a minute. Um, Mike, so, like I, I'm trying to be serious, and you're thinking I'm gonna joke. You know? No, no, go ahead. Mike Sullivan has a huge. Well, both of these men have a huge opportunity here to prove themselves to Jackie Barnett to show that they deserve a shot at possibly the infinite title. You know, you got Johnny Metal saying he wants a rematch, and that's great, but these two men could certainly jockey for position for that title as well. There's a lot of guys in the back that are, getting, that are jockeying for position for the infinite title. Hell, even the even the world title itself. Both these guys, Xander and Mike Sully, got a chance here. Sullivan, he's been he's been mostly known as a tag guy with Johnny Sinclair. Condolences to his family and friends. Who is out of action for a good while after that 
while he's in, underneath the fairgrounds right now. Who's at the hospital? <laughs> tending to his injuries. Yeah, that, that's what the that's what the medical reports say. Uh, we get started with this matchup here. Mike Sullivan starts off with a waist lock, and oh, waist lock takes out into a headlock. What? Now see, Mike Sullivan. He came to me earlier today, and he was talking to oh, me earlier look at today. This. Oh, chain wrestling here. Holy shit! You don't see this a lot. Let's be honest here. You don't see this a lot. A lot of chain wrestling. You really don't. Not from Mike Sully. This is uh, shocking. Well, I mean, Mike Sully came to me earlier today, and he's like, "Bro, I gotta, I gotta prove myself, bro. I gotta show the world, bro, that I'm not just a sing I'm not just a tag team guy, bro. I'm, <laughs> I'm a singles guy, bro. I can get it done in the ring all by myself, bro. And I'm gonna dedicate this match to my bro, my broski." Mike, so I mean Johnny Sinclair. I'm a, I'm gonna dedicate this to him, bro. Now that's exactly you that's exactly what he said. Words there, but yes. Now that's exactly what he told me. I'm telling you, I got the audio right here. I'm not gonna play it because we got a match going. On. Right now, Xander and Mike Sully are putting on a hell of a match. Yeah, and this Look. is what I was this is what I was talking about. See, Xander. He just competed for the ZCW World Title at the DCA and ZCW Super Show. A lot of people opened their eyes to Xander after that match. He he took one of the best in the world in Kenny Omega to the limit. And there's only a select few men that can say that in this business today. Xander is one of those men. And he has not even been in the business for that long. He really hasn't. So if that doesn't tell you something about this man, then I don't know what to tell you. Oh! Now what does that say about Mike Sully who just stopped his, who stopped that momentum he had with just one el elbow? Yeah. Oh wait, big chop, runs off the rope, big drop kick to the side of the head. That's what happens. And Sully's like telling him to get up. Get up, bro. I got more for you, bro. He's like, that haircut, it ain't doing it for me, bro. I'm taking it to my stylist after the match, bro. Wait a minute, Sully's got Dude. it. And then Gregor picks it on Mike Sullivan. All joking aside, Mike Sullivan is showing something here tonight. He really is. I mean, that, let's be honest here. And Xander's proving something as well. As if he hasn't done that already. Like I said, these two men could be in line for the Battle Pro Infinite title at some point in the down the line. As you see, Mike Sullivan with these punches in the corner. Sullivan's really putting it to him. But that's what he has to do, though. Not this, though. Showboat to the crowd. Yeah, he can't showboat to the crowd. He... Uh, oh, no. Oh, my God. He just he did, did this. He just did he that did in a Nashville that. crowd. Oh. We're not. Malik, you're not getting out of here tonight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm at to leave you. You're, you're not getting out of here tonight. No, you're you're not getting out of here tonight, bro. I think it's bad enough he. I think he was bad enough he dabbed on the crowd, and it's even worse knowing that he he just did a he just punted people, Xander's people kidneys. Are, people are flipping you off right now as we're in, here in the skybox, and I can see people raging in the crowd. Yeah, yeah, you might not get out of here tonight. I'm just letting you know that. Oh, try to go for that. Try to go for something, but no, Xander counters. I think Xander may be the biggest babyface in this match. Just from that dad. Uh-oh. And now look at this. Bow and arrow. Bow and arrow by Xander. Got, got Sully. See, this is what I was talking about. Xander showing everyone why he should be taken seriously. And I don't think... Oh, wait. Oh, no. Pin, no. Honestly... I don't know who called him the prodigy, but 
I don't think he's more he's much of a prodigy anymore as he is more of a a rising star, you know. Look at this. What is this? Jeez! Oh Cartwheel elbow jump. And look at this! Cartwheel boot salt! Jesus Christ, look at this man! Like I said. I don't think he's so much a prodigy anymore as he is more of a rising star. Because if you take Kenny Omega to the limit, you're not a prodigy anymore. You're already there. You're already you already made it. That Even if true. you lost, you already I made it. That. That I will tell. I'm going to if I, I ever see Zahaya. Here. Wait, wait, no, wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh. Well, uh, yeah. Super kick out of the. Oh, oh, oh wow. Xander got I'm gonna caught tell, with that I, super kick. I'm going to tell Zaya Morgan if I ever see him, as I've never met him before, but if I ever see him, I'm going to tell him. You just talk to him at the crowd. What are you talking about? Oh, well, I must I must have forgotten considering the fact that a man died on that night. But nonetheless, if I ever see him again... I will tell him to stop calling Xander a prodigy because he's not a prodigy. He's already he's already made it. He's already a star. He's not a prodigy anymore. Because if his recent outings have shown anything, it's the fact that prodigies are for people who. That's it. Oh! Dude! Like I said. Okay. Like I said. That's got to be it. That's got to be it. Nightmare Driver. Two. Two. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like I said, like I said, Malik, people call people prodigies for people who haven't made it yet but have that potential. Xander is not a prodigy anymore because he has already made it. That match with Kenny Omega and the match here tonight has proven that to a lot of people. So I am not going to call him a prodigy anymore. I am going, he is Xander, he is already a star, he has already made it. It's just a matter of time before he's a champion somewhere. I think the big question is, what do you call Mike Sully after this matchup? Um, Mike Sully is the prodigy now. They've switched roles. Mike Sully is the prodigy now. Xander is already a star. Fair enough. Zay, I'm talking to you, buddy. He's already a star. He's not a prodigy. He's a star already. Weeaboos everywhere are smiling down on Battle Pro at this moment. With that out first, ladies and gentlemen, the we, anime we, community is looking at us right now and they're telling us more, please. With that matchup out of the way and our commercials done, we move on to the main event of 
Episode 1 here of Battle Live, a number one contender match between Cody Martin and Nick Sponsored by Malik's Leaboos. Now available at the shop after the show. The plushies are coming out after the show, people. You won't be able to see it. But it, it's there, there, there. there. Cody Barnett, the former and the first ever Battle of the World Champion, after losing his title to Arcan many CPVs ago, has been on a. Uh, yes, I mean, this ever since he lost, ever since he lost his health and just the things that's been going on with Ben Taylor and his family, Cody's kind of been. He's been a very unstable man. There was a point in time where he was suspended for a good month because he attacked a cameraman at the end of one event. Has been back and has been on a war path. And I gotta say, Jack Barnett and Stat and the board directors have been trying to keep Cody Barnett away from Ben Taylor. But at the same time, you gotta wonder, is this a good idea for Cody Barnett to have a number one contender's match like contention while knowing that Ben Taylor is the new world champion. Well, all joking aside, I will say this about Cody Barnett. This is probably the best decision. Cause let's be honest, even if, if he doesn't get this number one contenders match, he's gonna go after Ben anyway. Well, that is true. If he gets suspended, he's gonna go after Ben anyway. If he gets fired, he's just gonna find Ben on the street somewhere and he's gonna get him then too. You might as well just put him in the match. Kenshin, on the other hand, he has been a world champion. He has been a champion, period, everywhere he's been. He's been in, in TCW Asterix. He's been in DCA. He's here in Battle Pro. He's done it all, and he's seen it all. And this man right here could pose a serious threat to the Charles Manson of virtual wrestling. True evil of... Battle Pro, Ben Taylor. That is true, and for those of you who did not see the crowning rebirth, Arcan, a former world champion, faced off against Ben Taylor, but came out the loser, and Ben Taylor is now your new world champion. Arcan is not here tonight. Arcan because, hasn't uh, been seen or heard from since the crowning rebirth. He's been uh, a lot of people. Well, a lot of people won't tell you that, but considering that I have the inside scoop around here, considering that nobody else wants to. Um, Arcan hasn't been around since. He prided on that world championship more than anybody else in the history of this company. And now that he does not have that belt anymore, it seems like he's just lost all sense of himself. I mean, that is one way to put it. And it, now it is the way to put it because let's, let, you should know this better than I should. Arkan held a death grip on that world title. He did not want to let it go. He was complaining for years about the fact that he wasn't the center of attention even though he was the world champion. And he had everybody else go above him in terms of attention here in Battle Pro. So you think now he doesn't have that world title anymore. He's not the center of attention anymore. And that's what Arkan lives for, breathes for. And now he doesn't have any of that anymore. I mean, you're right about the part. You are right about that. For years, even when he was world champion and he busted his ass to be the world champion, he felt that he felt that as world champion, he didn't get the attention or the recognition of what he has done. And that is due to the fact of Vin Taylor and just the carnage he left here in Battle Pro. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying is that you go, you know, you oh. got to. Oh God. Straight knee to the face. Yeah, you got to think about it. These two men have a huge opportunity to take Arkan's spot as that top guy, but they got to go through each other and Vin Taylor to get there. For Kenshin, it's for Kenshin, it's him trying to get, trying to gain another world title. For Cody, it's trying to get back to that, get back to the top of the mountain that he once. Well, that he once was. Well, actually, in the Cody's case, is it really about that or is it about revenge on Ben Taylor? Which one does he want more? 
Because you got to ask that question. Which one does he really, in his heart of hearts, want oh, look more? At, oh, look at that monkey flip. Well, it depends on the then and now, to be fair. If we were talking to a Cody Barnett during the humble beginnings of Battle Pokemon, when he did lose that title and everything went on, you can say that it was he definitely wanted his title back. But if we're talking about the Cody now, the title is just, the title is the, the furthest thing from his mind. Oh! Big cross body. And that's the, and that's what might get him. Honestly, that's what might get him. If he's, I mean, even if he wins this match, he could be so sorely focused on Ben Taylor, he forgets about the fact that the title's also on the line. And there and there won't be any no disqualification rules in this in that title match. So Cody Barnett, if he loses his focus for a split second, he grabs a chair or a weapon of some kind or whatever, he could end up losing on the spot of the world. He could be ending up losing the world title, not only before he gets it, but before he even realizes that it's even at stake. That is true. And now Kenshin going off to the other side. And, oh! I don't see Kenshin having that issue. Kenshin is a, a professional in that ring. He knows his way around it. He knows what's at stake, when it's at stake. He's been, like you said, he's been to the top of the mountain before. He's been to the, the chop of the of the heap at every every turn, every company he's been in. He's been a top guy. I mean, he's had wars before, so he knows how to deal with a guy like Vin Taylor. Or, you know what, I can't even say that. I don't think, even if he was to face Vin, I don't know if he's ever dealt with somebody like Vin before. Maybe not, but Kenshin, if there's one thing he's known how to do his entire career, is adapt to any situation. That is you know, very we've true. Seen it with, we've seen it in his wars with BB Disco and TCW Asterisk. We saw it when he first debuted in DCA against Alexander Washington. Again with Rocky him, Blade. Rocky Blade here in Battle Pro. He's done. He's been able to adapt to any style of opponent that he's been in the ring with. So I don't think it's going to be too... I mean, I know it's going to be a kind of a deal of unpredictability when it comes to Ben Taylor. But at the same time, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue as it would be for somebody else. As you see Cody Barnett countering with a Northern Light suplex there. And now, uh-oh. Jesus! Alabama slam shades of hardcore Bob Holly there. Cody Barnett showing that he wants to be in that conversation for the world title. As you see him running in with a knee to the midsection. And now running off the ropes and a hesitation drop kick. And Cody keeping the pace up. That might be what he needs to get the win here. As he's going up to the top row. Moonsault does not get it. He gets the moonsault, but he gets nothing but the mat on the way down. And Kenshin, the ring veteran that he is, swinging fisherman neck breaker. Trying to take advantage, and now he looks like he's setting up for something here. Cody on his feet. And now a tornado DDT. Nicely executed by Kenshin. Kenshin smart, moving him away from the ropes so he doesn't grab him. Cover one, two, and no. Referee's hand was coming down for three, but referee telling Kenshin it was only a two count there. And Kenshin trying to stay on Cody Barnett. He's got to do that if he's going to get a title shot. And Cody kicking him at the leg. That could be smart. Take out the legs of Kenshin. You take out his speed. You take out his offense. And now right at the back. You also take away that boot to head technique he exactly. likes to do. Oh, look at that. Double revolution head scissors by Cody. Cody trying to get back into this matchup. He has to. Uh-oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, my God. Discus, Big Larry. Discus Larry, and that would make Kaeva Andrews jealous. And it only gets a two count, though. Well, you're dealing with a family who's made, who's made the Lariat a repertoire in yeah. their arsenal. Yeah. 
Uh oh. Now, half hatch suplex. Nicely done there. And Cody's getting back into this matchup. Like I said, this is the Dead Man Wonderland rematch that never got to be because Arcan. Oh, wait a minute. What is, what's Cody doing here? Cody's doing what he has to do to get a title shot, Malik. Look at that! <laughs> oh my god. You want to talk about taking a risk? He took a big one there. All the way to the outside, over the top rope, throwing Kenshin back in the ring, and now he's calling him up to his feet. Kenshin not knowing where he is. Cody's got to take advantage right now in a spear. Big spear. And now, uh oh, Cody with a lion's salt. That was a coast to coast lion salt. Good gracious. That's the oh, wait a athletic ability that Cody has there. Now, uh oh, look at this. Nope. Kenshin STO counter. And oh. now Kitchen's serious here. Looks like he was trying to go for the Queen's Mar the Queen Mary's revenge. Yeah, but it's not going to be that easy to put Kitchen away. He he should know this. Stunt the knees right in. Uh oh. Knees right to the midsection now. Oh look at this. Oh. Went for the boot to head technique and Cody with a DDT. Cody saw that boot to head technique coming and he got out of the way real quick. Yeah, he saw that. He knew it was coming. He has to in a match like this. This is some serious stakes here. Now a knife edge chop. That's gonna light up Kenshin's chest and take the breath away from him. And now, look at this. Swanton from the springboard. And now going quickly into the cover, hooking the leg. One, two, and no! Jeez. Oh, He's got to keep chopping away at him. He can't get frustrated with the referee. He's got to stay on Kenshin. This is why Kenshin's a veteran in this business, because he realized he doesn't go for mistakes like that, arguing with the referee, pandering to the crowd, all that stuff. He just goes right in for the kill. As you see here, DDT again! Put a lot of that one into it, and now Kenshin telling Tell Cody, get up. Tell Cody to get up, but Cody can barely get up on his own two feet. So he just takes it down with a, a drop, I mean, a uh, elbow drop instead. Now a right hand, and then a left in the midsection, and a right in the midsection, and a knife edge shot, and another one. And now a third one. Given Cody a receipt for earlier. He's like, he's like, all right, young boy, this is how you throw a chop. Yep, uh-oh. And then a, just a straight forearm to the spine. You can say Kenshin is just imposing his will right now. He is the bigger man in the mat. Uh-oh. What's this? Jesus! <laughs> Somebody pick star some, bomb. Somebody's pick him up off the bat. Oh god. I was gonna say somebody's squeegeeing him, squeegee him up off the mat, but Cody still got some fight left in him. This is why Cody was a former world champion. Yeah. And, uh -oh, oh, sending him all the way out. Now, uh oh, Cody looking for something here, but Kenshin. Dazed and confused, but not so much to get out of the way of that move. Like he was trying to crown him from the apron. Yeah, but Kenshin, like I said, he's a veteran. He may, have, he may have been dazed and confused, but he still realized what was coming his way. Now, Kenshin throwing Cody as hard as he can into the, bear, into the turn back of there. And now Kenshin looks like he's going for something here. Uh-oh. Wait, wait a minute. Look at this. Jesus! Oh. Osaka Street Cutter by Kenshin. And Kenshin looking to finish it. Here we go. Is he going to go for the boot to head tech? No! Cody again sees it coming. And Jesus Christ! Chicken wing gut buster. And the referee having to check in. That was such a devastating maneuver that he has to go and check on Kenshin. That tells you how hard Cody Barnett executed that move. He went 
hard as humanly possible with that. And now, uh -oh. Cody's going to the top rope. Uh -oh. Look at this. Damn! Yeah, we looked at it all right. We looked at the boot to head technique. One, two, and three. After dodging that move multiple times. Somebody get the, just somebody wipe him off the mat right now. Just squeegee him up off the canvas because he got his head taken clear off his shoulders right there. Look at this. And some of the highlights of the matchup. Oh, God, that Alabama slam. That Alabama slam that made Bob Holly smile right there. That dive over the top rope, clear over the top, and then bam! You get hit with that, you're done. Boot to head technique out of nowhere. That was it. Yeah, you're done after that. Cody tried to counter he, so many times. He, yeah, but when you're going up, if you have that momentum going up from the top rope like that, you're you're not getting, you're not dodging that. And Kenshin now will face True Evil himself, Ben Taylor, for the world title. Can you imagine that match? It's gonna be crazy. Kenshin and Ben Taylor for the world title. That is a CPV main event anywhere in the freaking world. And tension. It, oh, oh shit. Oh boy. Well. Oh. Yep. Oh. Yep. Yep. Ben Taylor staring down his challenger for the world title. Coming after that. What the fuck? Ladies and gentlemen, after what? that. No, wait, wait, wait. What was that? Okay, fuck. What <laughs> the fuck was that? Somebody, somebody tell me. Jackie, some, is this what you called me in here for? You called me in here. You called me in here. You said, "Hey, hey, you guys did. You did a great job on the, the crowning rebirth. We want to cut, bring you back in." I'm like, "Okay, sure. If you pay me enough." I'm like, "Okay, good." And then I come in and I see shit like this. What the hell was that? I love anime as much as the next guy, but what the hell was that? It's done. Nah. Somebody tell me, please. We have to start that back up.